Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. I am, as always, Ushio, and today we are tackling one of the most memorable and one of the best levels in the game, Shambhala Sanctuary. We've got a short bit of just platforming to do, but it's important to know that Shambhala is a mystical kingdom featured in Tibetan Buddhism and Hinduism, uh, which is said to be laid out in precisely the shape of a lotus flower surrounded by snowy mountains. We have the snowy mountains, but... This seems like a monastery, but the religion is unknown, at least to me. That doesn't look like any lotus flower I've ever seen in this. It's a door, but I can't seem to open it from this side. Still stuck, more platforming to do. Indy is uh, on his way over to the side of the building here where he will find possibly the longest wall climb in the game as well as the first treasure. Shambhala is said to be a place of absolute harmony and perfection, where nobody suffers and everything is righteous and good. Hey! It's more of a state of mind than a physical place. Kind of like, uh, you know, the kingdom of heaven. But, uh, obviously much more eastern. Anyway, I figured out how to speed up the video. That wasn't so bad, was it? Much better than it could have been. That was like a solid minute, minute and a half of climbing. Whoa! <sighs> We've stumbled into the main puzzle of the region. An interesting gadget. But for now, there's nowhere to go but down. The lead designer of this game, Hal Barwood, figured that Indiana Jones fit better into an action environment than he did into a point-and-click one. Hmm. That didn't quite work. So they set to work on this. Originally, the plot was supposed to feature Nazis and UFOs, but he thought that Nazis were a bit overdone, and that uh, also Lucas Arts and George Lucas himself had uh, said no to the UFO idea. There's a keyhole here. I just need the key. Apparently he had some ideas for a fourth movie. Well, what happened here? Did the monks lose faith all of a sudden? They didn't even now, bury their dead. Ominous. I mean, the clock was weird. But the dead people, not good. And if the game agrees, it's playing the scary music sting. What in the name of biology was that? What indeed. In fact, it was our first supernatural enemy, the weird ice critters. They don't really have an official name. This thing has more sprockets than the inside of Dad's old clock. Speaking of sprockets, after the UFO idea was rejected, Hal became fascinated with something known as the Antikythera mechanism, which was found off the coast of Greece in 1902. It's a weird piece of out-of-place archaeology that uh, nobody's quite sure what it's for. Look it up. It's pretty interesting. But anyway, he took that basic thing, made it Sophia's part, and uh, hooked up this Tower of Babel thing with the Infernal Machine, and here we are searching for the bits and pieces. Think of this as a grand tour of mystical cities. We'll be hitting all the big stops, except Atlantis, which was of course covered in the last game. We made short work of a couple ice monsters. 
I'm not jumping in there. I'll freeze. They're pretty weak. The shots don't do a lot of damage, but they will explode and do area of effect damage when they die, so you don't want to be too close. I've forgotten something. Hold on a minute. Right. Forgot to start the puzzle. Absolutely need to do that before I continue. Yes, it's another jumping puzzle. There aren't a ton with this degree of complexity. Uh, this one is about the same difficulty as the one in the previous level. But this one is much longer. I assure you, I do know the hotkeys for selecting different items and weapons. I just find it quicker and easier to use the menu, because then I don't have to think. This is a tricky jump. Gotta be right at the edge and running, and of course, timed properly. Now, I could have gone for these herbs when nothing was moving, but where's the fun in that? Hmm. Medicinal herbs. Again, this jump is not as hard as it looks. It's just a matter of good timing. Same with this one. Just make sure you're lined up. I got a little bit gutsy there. This next jump is tricky. It requires a standing jump right from the edge. Running jump will overshoot you at almost every time. And of course, what would a moving platform jumping puzzle be without optional treasure? Right at the end, of course. What's this? And the way back is actually easier than the previous jump onto the moving platform. It just seems like it's a little harder because you, while you can actually grab onto these moving platforms while they're moving, I've never managed to do so except once accidentally. Also, never sidestep on a moving platform. You sort of float off of it. I learned that the hard way. I swear, there are at least four or five different versions of the Indiana Jones sting in this. There's a happy one, there's a sad one, there's a scary one, there's a tense one. Just keep an ear open. I might just start keeping count. Hold on, I messed up. Much better. This puzzle's really easy. I'm just a bit of an idiot. With that, we have our power source connected to our drive shaft, which means that big clock should be ticking now. Let's head back up and take a look. Ah yes, the clock is ticking. Take note of that big face on the wall. We'll want to keep it in mind. Dead end here, but we do see our next goal. Of course, there is another little hidden treasure down here. Ah, rushing water. I didn't hear, expect to hear you again so soon. Excuse me while I get a little turned around. I, uh, pretty sure you can make this jump. I'm just in the wrong spot. I'm actually completely going in the wrong direction right now. I'll realize it in about half a second.
I didn't speed this part up, because we're going to speed up a whole bunch in this video, and this isn't really so bad. There's actually this little hidden stairwell here, which is a quick way up to where we're headed. Okay, so the switch powers the guy with the hammer and makes a little thing pop out on the clock face. Kind of strange they're using 12 hour time here, but uh, I guess the ancients were really super advanced. This jump you can't make, I'm certain of it. This one, however, I should be able to make. They seem like they actually are just a little bit too tall for Indy to grab onto, so he may be grabbing them as a little bit of a glitch. I didn't show it before, but there is a treasure over here on the opposite side of the room, which the bridge across to it has now just opened as well. It's convenient to grab this now, because we actually have to stop back at the clock switch for a moment. Now what? I'll explain what we're doing in a minute, but for now, we have to pull this a lot. There we go. We'll get a hint in a few minutes explaining why I did that, but it would involve backtracking, and I'm allergic to that. The whip path makes for a nice quick transversal up here. I try to whip these little things. They don't seem to work. So we'll do it the hard way. With the power going to this room, this switch is also active. that, we can make our way into the tower we saw earlier. That's too far to drop. And that won't work yet. So what we actually have to do is jump in that little window you might have seen. And the return of the glass shooting mechanic. I think we do this once, maybe twice more, and that's it. Never have to shoot through glass again. Agile little fuckers. Nowhere to go but down. Yeah. Pretty simple affair. Just drop down here. And we find a bell. Obviously the other side of the room bridge. If you hadn't gotten the treasure before, you could have seen it. There's some writing etched in the bronze. Ring for the master. 
As I remember, bells are rung on the hour. What time is it? I don't want to wait around till high noon. So that was the clue for the switch puzzle with the clock. It tells you to set it to noon, or at least to the hour. Uh, you then have to make the inference that the big face on the wall is in fact the 12 o'clock mark on a 12 hour system uh, and set it as such. It's a bunch of backtracking that, you know, it was an era of backtracking. Speaking of backtracking, we just have to make our way back up to the top of this tower. Not too long of a climb. Only a few floors. I recently tried the Game Boy Color version of this. It's interesting. Very bare bones in terms of story presentation, but all 17 levels are there. And, uh, you know, it's a good bit of fun. The bell is in position. But did somebody say massive amounts of backtracking? Because I sure did. Hey. I'm so glad we figured out that speed up function. Special thanks to the tech support for it for that one. Hello, young man. You ran. Well, that's right, I did. And you want my help. Do I? To tell you the truth, I'm kind of lost. But it is you who must help me. As you have guessed, a man from the desert came to us long ago with the spinning idol. For centuries we have lived with his evil legacy. Take it, and our blessing be upon you. Show me the way. Ugh, I am too old and infirm. To be of any service, I must recover my former strength. And that, I am afraid, requires a certain golden treasure. Okay, golden treasure. Where is it? Why, in the treasury, of course. Take this. It may help you. Hello again. There's the golden treasure. I haven't found it yet. Examine the treasury. Oh, we've met an unexpected uh, ally. Now we have an objective, so it's back down to the bottom floor of the tower we go. It's nice to get some help once in a while, you know? We've had a shady CIA guy. We've had Sophia, who we clearly have some past with. But uh, now we have an ancient wise woman. What do you know? It worked. So this is the second main puzzle of the level. Uh, pretty straightforward, unless you're an idiot and happen to miss uh, a couple things, like that door right in front of us. And we have finally opened the temple front doors, which we saw way back at the beginning of the level. Now, as I said, if you didn't see this door like I didn't the first time I played, you will be here for a while. Uh, like, at least 20 minutes of wandering around blindly, wondering what to do. But uh, once you notice it, it's pretty straightforward. I actually solved this puzzle completely out of sequence because, as I said, did not notice this door. Let's just uh, sneak up into what is assumably the monk's sleeping quarters. See what they got for us.
What have we here? Medicinal herbs. Hmm. Couple nice little healing items and treasures. But that's not what we really came here for. Hmm, that could be useful. No, what we want is up this other ladder. Into what I can only assume is the head monk's bedchamber. A beautiful private room and an adjoining study where we find a very important item. Aha! I've found the great monastic seal. Commies again. I'm beginning to hate those guys. Uh-oh. Looks like we've triggered company. Let's get in there. Where'd he go? Uh-oh, indeed. I've run out of ammo. We now get to see the machine pistol in action. As you can see, fires nice and fast, drops enemies in a couple bullets, but you don't get a ton of ammo for it. Now we could pop outside and fight the, no the Nazis. I keep wanting to call the bad guys Nazis. I mean, it's practically Indiana's Jones job to punch Nazis, right? But anyway, we could go outside and fight the remaining Soviets, but there's no reason to do so except to waste health and ammo. Now that we've stocked up on 9mm again, I switch back to that as it's a much more reliable main piece. Machine pistol's good in an emergency, but I find if you use it as a primary weapon, you're always out of ammo. I need to find a better spot. Slide over to that other side, Indy. Switch. Another thing I missed when I played this the first time was uh, this door. I uh, missed the cutscene where I rotated the switch. Now, though, we've got a treasure. And this doesn't feel he right. Says, a trap. Now what? A rare oh, opportunity to oh. dodge roll, more like. Somebody pointed out in the thread they share their hatred of spiders with me. Well, have fun. This is one of the worst spider traps. As the poster in question mentioned, you have to uh, trigger the ammo before here. you can fight them due to the auto aim. Just checking for more spiders. This trap is pretty simple. It's a repeat of one we saw in an earlier level, only with a log instead of a crusher.
That didn't work. Elevator was already here, Indy. But first we've got a treasure to get. I sense a trap. Another use for the whip. Another thing we'll never do again. Look what I found. An idol. And up we go. A fancy door needs a fancy key. There's a keyhole here. I just need the key. Which we happen to collect already. It fits. This stage has a real thing for jumping puzzles. There's two big ones in it alone. I think most levels have some small jumping puzzle, but nothing on this scale uh, after this, really. Danger. Gotta be quick. And a key. But no key. What's this? A key. It's without its risk in this game. I'm not even sure where he came from. Out from under one of the tapestries, perhaps. Off we go to the other side of the room. And one more for posterity. I'm not sure what's worse, shimmy or climbing. Either way, another tricky little path here. As I said, this is a very long jumping puzzle. We've been at it a few minutes now. We're almost at the end. This is even one of the more forgiving ones. If you fall off, you can just come back up here. There's water underneath. Uh, you know, that's kind of negated by the existence of safe states, but it's a nice design touch. Almost there. Just one thing to do before we pull this wall out, and that's push it in. For a well-hidden treasure. What have we here? that block in place, we have enough height to reach this top of the wooden pillar and finally reach our objective. Whoa! Just, uh, get that lock, Andy. Yeah, that's it. 
there. Hmm. Hmm. A Look out, Indy! It would have been nice if the developers included a dive animation, but, you know. Back to the central chamber. Something occurs to me. I've forgotten the treasure. Hold on a minute. Look what I found. I got a little lost, but with that last treasure, we can finish the main puzzle for the level and uh, head back to meet the wise woman. We've still got a bit of work to do, though. You might have remembered that that thing fell down uh, much earlier. Well, now we have to actually get up to it. There was a ladder, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere. That'll do it. Did I mention I'm really good at platformers? Yep. Absolutely a genius. really not that hard. I just let go of the run button, I guess. Up here we find a library and reading room. This is a dead end. But there's a window to the outside over there. Indy? Indy, where'd your gun go, Indy? Oh, there it is. I hear something. It's honestly easier just to rush these things than to try to lure them out. Now I keep rubbing my face up against random objects. Here's why. Look, the second book of Aristotle's Poetics. You don't see that on every shelf. As far as I know, that is the only incidental thing in the game that has its own little voice acted line. That window doesn't count. Somebody broke it for us. We were under fire the entire time we were shimmying. Uh, if we'd bothered to go clear out the guards What's in the this? courtyard, it wouldn't have been an issue. Medicinal it herbs. really wasn't anyway. But, nice little touch. Medicinal herbs. This might work as a flower We've got pot. one of those. Time to head back down, see how our green thumb is. Something about that corner, I almost always get stuck on it.
What do you know? The bulb sprouted. I'm no gardener, but I read somewhere that plants need light. That's a pretty big hint for Mindy. But if you happen to go back to the wise lady at any point with uh, the bulb or the sprouted plant, she'll give you a hint about roughly the same thing. For now, though, despite what you may think, the solution is not as simple as taking the bulb into an outdoors area. Believe me, I tried. Has to be that light. Now the plant is a bud. And with that, our second puzzle is solved. We can now just return to the wise woman. But first, a little bit of combat to take care of. To your piazza! Nicely done. We're a little low on health, but uh, I will rectify that shortly. If I had to pick one thing I didn't really like about this game, I would have to say it's the combat. It is not good. It's one of the things that the N64 version improved upon, actually, as it uses Z targeting, like Zelda. Uh, but otherwise, still not great. Stay on the As you can see, if you're too close to somebody, you sort of shoot through them. So make sure you're at least a, foot, a couple feet away. Head back up the quick way via the ladder and the whipping post. I haven't had a ton to say about this level, honestly. I feel it speaks for itself very well. No, we need not the whip, not the whip. This is the last time they really just drop guards around blind corners as well. Most times guards are telegraphed pretty openly. Sorry about that. All right, lady. We found a flower. Is that enough? You again. Do you have the treasure? Here's the best I could do. I hope you're not disappointed. Not yet. Your gift is great. Now. Here is the way to the Babylonian curse. Return when you have cleansed the sanctuary. Beware the ice. Oh wait, did you think we were done? Because we're not done. In fact, we've got another few minutes left. We haven't found a part of the Infernal Machine yet, after all.
what have we here? That's right. There's a boss fight. Indiana Jones and the boss fight. This creature is creatively named the Ice Guardian. And he will mostly patrol the room, sending shots at you and uh, trying to do a roll move, which will do a lot of damage to the connects. If you get too close, he'll do some slashes for quite a bit of damage. First thing you want to do is, of course, grab these items in the side room. But getting in here particularly first is most important. You will be trucking a bunch of damage in this area. It's, as far as I can tell, unavoidable. But the items they give you should get you through it. Run, Indy, run! If you mess up the part with the falling bridge, there is another way back up. It is a lot longer, though, so be prepared to take a lot of damage. The bosses in this game aren't really direct boss frights. They're more like a puzzle boss. Each one's a little bit different, and they're all not really bad, but, uh... They're a little bit boring. This one at least manages to keep the tension up with the chase. We have reached temporary safety. <laughs> That looks sparkly. Hey, buddy. So, uh, are you Ergon? What's this? Part of the infernal machine. Because this is, you know, Ergon's part and all. Uh, you'll see it in action just up ahead. It is our ticket to beating that boss. Think of it like our bomb. Now to actually defeat the boss, you just simply run up to him, cram this thing in his face, and hit the action button. After that, you'll notice your purple meter is emptied. You have to wait for that to recharge, or if you use the Ergon's part again before it's completely recharged, you will take a lot of damage. Kill yourself in one or two hits that way. But for now, just rinse and repeat. Three times. I like to duck into this little alcove because there's a roof. Uh, he can't really get you in here. He just sort of runs up on the roof, acts confused. And then as soon as you step back out, he comes back down. The way I look at this is it doesn't so much cause explosions, is that it causes intense vibrations. Which is why it works on that crystalline structure of the ice, and this cracked ice rock up ahead. Success. But with that, we have reached the end of Shambhala Sanctuary. Join me next time. Here, I guess this belongs to you. No, take it away. What is it anyway? I don't know. A relic. You have found part of something terrible. Are you prepared to continue? Yeah, there's supposed to be more of these things. Although Ergon dwelt with us in Shambhala, his companion Taklit journeyed onward to the Eastern Ocean. 
There, he took advantage of a people starving for knowledge. Are you talking about the Pacific? That's a wide stretch of water. Look for a tropical island among many others, where men have lived for eons uncounted. They call it Palawan, I believe. Follow this path. <laughs>